Good afternoon and welcome to Jayhawk Newsbreak. I'm Patrick Sullivan. We finally got some weather here in Lawrence. Just a little later, I'll let you know just how beautiful it's going to be here. Until then, we'll keep you up to date with your local news. Just over a month ago, university officials, including members of the Interfraternity Council and the Silk Office, imposed a freeze on all fraternity proceedings. The action came as a surprise to many, but not so much to others. Take a look. A group of university students and officials met March 11th at the Student Union to discuss the possibility of imposing a ban on all fraternity activities. The next morning, the ban was announced and the questions began. I was pretty shocked. Um, you know, we were planning on having a meeting with the chancellor later that day and we get this message about the ban and it basically derailed our entire meeting and changed the course of action for the next couple of weeks. The officials in charge of this action, including the Student Involvement and Leadership Center, did not notify the fraternities of the potential ban and there was no vote on the action by the General Assembly, as is common practice for IFC proceedings. Four days later, the ban was lifted as it was labeled unconstitutional by the IFC Executive Board. But IFC is now looking for new ways to improve fraternity life through a different method. So the conversations that have been taking place now are not about punishments and sanctions. They're more about education and development. Um, there's two committees that are going to be formed in the, in the coming weeks, one of mainly student input as well as some different offices on campus. So although the freeze did not last as long as some of the authors would have hoped, IFC officials believe they are taking correct steps in making a positive change. One of the steps that had to be taken was a judicial review of the IFC members who unconstitutionally sanctioned the freeze. The General Assembly came to a meeting and placed all four um, officers remaining on the board under the recall process, um, which basically means that the General Assembly saw them in violation of the Constitution and bylaws, and they put them under judicial process. Following this meeting, IFC only removed one of the four members from his position. Now it is up to the new board to put measures in place to make sure fraternities are safe and constructive for the years to come. Looks like fraternities are free for now. Let's see if they can keep it that way. The Hollywood Chamber of Commerce will honor the late Steve Irwin today with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Irwin was an animal activist and energetic host of a TV show called The Crocodile Hunter. He died in 2006 after being stung by a stingray while diving off Australia's northern coast. Irwin's family will accept this star on be his behalf. I always loved watching that show growing up. It's great to hear that the crocodile hunter will be remembered on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And now back to the weather. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Temperatures in the 70s and no rain in sight. Today we've got a high of 68 degrees out there with a low of 49, but I'll tell you what, it feels perfect outside. Tomorrow we're even looking a little better. We're gonna go up to 71 with a low of 51, just a few clouds out there. Moving on into the weekend, Saturday has a high of 75 and no clouds in the sky. Don't think we could ask for much more than that. Uh, from all of us here, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to Jayhawk Newsbreak. We hope you had fun and will join us next time. I'm Patrick Sullivan. Have a good one. Thank you.